Hey, what's up guys? It's Ndafara from NKT Studios. And in this video, we're going to be talking about the AWS Certificate Manager, which is also known as ACM. I will also show you how you can get and use free SSL TLS certificates. ACM handles the complexity of creating and managing public SSL TLS certificates for your AWS based websites and applications. You can use public certificates provided by ACM or you can import your own certificates into ACM. At the end of the video, you'll be able to create an SSL TLS certificate and use it on an EC2 instance with the website behind an elastic load balancer. So you go from this, which is not secure because there is no SSL TLS certificate to this, which is secure because we are using an SSL TLS certificate. As you can see here, it says certificate is valid and the certificate is issued by Amazon, which is our free SSL TLS certificate. In case you are wondering why behind an elastic load balancer, this is because you cannot install the free AWS Certificate Manager certificates directly onto a website or application. Instead, you must install your certificates by using one of the services integrated with ACM. And these services are Elastic Load Balancing, Amazon CloudFront, AWS Elastic Beanstalk, Amazon API Gateway, and AWS CloudFormation. So in our case, we'll put one EC2 instance with a basic website behind a load balancer and then apply the free ACM certificate on the load balancer. Before we begin, please make sure that you have access to a domain name and you can create DNS resource records for that domain. For the certificate to work, we will need to create a canonical name, also known as CNAME record, and for the domain that we choose to work, we will need to create an A record. I will use astuteprep.com, which is a domain that I own. The first thing that we're going to do is to create the free SSL TLS certificate. So just log into your AWS console. Once in the AWS console, just come here under Find Services and type in Set. Select Certificate Manager. And as you can see, I don't have any certificates. Just go here under provision certificates, which is not a private certificate and click on get started. Make sure request a public certificate is selected and then click on request a certificate. Now we need to give our certificate a domain where it will be attached. This is also the domain where we will attach our load balancer. I'm going to call my domain setmanagergmo.astutprep.com. So it's going to be setmanagergmo.astutprep. Com. And then I'm going to click on next. The next step is domain validation. AWS needs to make sure that you control the domain for which you are requesting the certificate. There are two types of validation, DNS validation and email validation. I'm going to keep DNS validation selected. This is why you need access to modify the DNS records and then just click on next. We're not going to add any tags, so just click on review and it will show our current choices. As you can see, this is our domain name setmanagerdemo.astuteprep.com and our validation method is DNS. Click on confirm and request to request the certificate. As you can see, the request is in progress. We won't get the certificate until we validate the domain and we do that by creating the CNAME record. And as you can see here, it says pending validation. You can export the DNS configuration for the CNAME record by clicking here on export DNS configuration to a file. If you expand the domain here, you can see the record that you are supposed to create. As you can see, we are supposed to create a CNAME record. This is the same record that will be on this file if you export it. But I'm not going to export it. Instead, I'm just going to leave this page open. If your domain is in root 53, which is Amazon's DNS service, you can just click this button here and it will create it. My domain is on root 53, but I'll just show you how you do it if you're hosting it elsewhere. So just click on services, type root, and select the one that just says root 53. I'm going to open mine in a new tab. When it opens up, just click on hosted zones under DNS management and you'll see all your domains. As you can see, I only have one domain, which is astuteprep.com. Just click on it. And when it opens up, click on create record set. On the name, just go back to the certificate manager and then copy the name here. Go back to root 53 and then paste. Take note, I need to remove astuteprep.com as it's already provided. And then on the type, select CNAME. Go back to Certificate Manager and then copy the value. Go back to root 53 and then paste it here. Click on Create to create it. As you can see here, our record was successfully created. Now let's go back to Certificate Manager and then just click on Continue. As you can see here, the status is still pending validation. This is because DNS propagation takes a bit of time. So we just need to wait a little bit. I've waited for about five minutes. So let me just click on refresh.
And as you can see, the status is now saying issued. This means that we have successfully created our SSL TLS certificate. Our newly created certificate is not yet in use and you can verify it here where it says in use, no. To use it, we will create an EC2 instance with a basic website that just says hello world from NKT Studios. So just click on services, type in EC2 and then select it. When it opens up, just click on launch instance to start the process of creating an EC2 instance. Choose Amazon Linux 2 as the instance type. Keep the default selected which is a general purpose EC2 instance and then click on next configure instance details. Leave everything as default but scroll down to user data where we are going to paste this code. I've put a link in the description below of where you can get this code but I'm just going to explain it for you. This just means that this is a bash script. Here we are updating the machine. Remember it's a brand new Linux machine so we're just updating the packages. Here we're just installing the HTTPD service on the machine. Here we're starting the service and here we're enabling it across reboots. So every time we restart our EC2 instance, we don't want to start this service. We want it to start automatically. And the last one has got a comment already. We are creating an HTML page and putting it in www.html.index. This is a page that the user will see when they go to our website. Then next click on add storage. We're just going to keep the defaults. So click on next add tags. We are not going to put in any tags. So click on next configure security group. When the configure security group page opens up, just make sure that create a new security group is selected. And then we have to give our security group a name as well as a description. I'm going to call mine set manager demo SG for security group. And I'm also going to give it a description, which is just uh, security group for set manager. For, I'm just going to write it in full. And then on the rules, delete the default SSH port 22 rule. Straight after that, we'll get a warning that we'll not be able to connect to this instance as the AMI requires port 22. This is fine because we are not going to SSH into the machine. Now we just need to add the HTTP and HTTPS rules. So just click on add rule. Here select HTTP and then add another rule and then here select HTTPS. Click on review and launch. Here you can verify that everything is all right. I know that everything is all right. So just click on launch. It will ask us to select or choose a key pair. But as we will not be logging into this machine, there is no need for a key pair. So just click on the drop down here and select proceed without a key. And then just acknowledge that you won't be able to log into this instance and then click on launch instances. It will start the instance creation process. You can click on view instances to see the progress. As you can see, the state is pending and the status checks are initializing. When the check says two out of two checks passed, then the instance will be ready. As you can see, the status checks is saying two out of two checks passed. This means that our instance is ready. To verify that it is working as expected, just scroll down where it says public IP and copy it and then open it in your browser. As you can see, we are getting hello world from NKT Studios, which means that our EC2 instance has been set up correctly. So I'm just going to close this. With our instance ready, we now need to create a load balancer. But before we do, just take note of this availability zone as we're going to need it later. Mine is EU West 1A. Now remember, the reason we're creating a load balancer is because we cannot attach our SSL TLS certificate directly onto our EC2 instance. So we'll attach our certificate on the load balancer and then put our EC2 instance behind the load balancer, thereby applying the certificate to the EC2 instance. To create our load balancer, just scroll down on the left here under load balancing and then click on load balancers. When it opens up, just click on create load balancer. Here, we are going to select the application load balancer, but we could also do it using the classic load balancer. But as you can see here, it is previous generation and might be deprecated soon. So under application load balancer, click on create. We need to give our load balancer a name. And for mine, I have chosen set manager demo application load balancer. I'm going to leave the scheme as internet facing and the IP address as IPv4. On the listeners, I'm going to add HTTPS. It automatically puts in the load balancer port as 443. I am leaving HTTP there so that you can see the difference between secure and unsecure and also you can see how to do redirects. And on the availability zones, select the zones that you want, but make sure that the one where our instance was launched is selected. In my case, 
My instance was launched in EU West 1A, but I'm just going to select the other ones. Then click on Next Configure Security Settings. This is where we're going to choose our SSL TLS certificate. So on certificate type, make sure that choose a certificate from ACM is selected and on the certificate name, choose our certificate. I only have one certificate, so it's already preloaded. You can also request a new certificate from here. You just need to click on here. Leave everything else as default and then click on Next, Configure Security Groups. Here, select the security group we created before, which is Set Manager Demo SG. And then click on Next, Configure Routing. Here, we have to select the target group. A target group is a collection of either EC2 instances, IP addresses, or Lambda functions where the load balancer will send traffic. I don't have any target group, so under target group, make sure that new target group is selected. And then we need to give it a name. I'm going to call mine Set Manager Demo TG. So that's Set Manager Demo TG. On the target type, we've got an EC2 instance, an IP address, or a Lambda function. Make sure that we have selected an instance because we want to send our traffic to an EC2 instance. And the protocol that we're going to use is going to be HTTP and the port is going to be 80. Just a question before we proceed. Why do you think I'm leaving the protocol as HTTP and the port is 80 when we want to communicate securely? The answer is at the end of the video. Now, leave everything as default and click on Next Register Targets. This is where we need to select the instances that will get traffic from our application load balancer. Take note of the register targets here. As you can see, there are no instances here. So just select our EC2 instance and then click Add to register. As you can see, our EC2 instance is now under register targets. Then click on Next, Review. This review page is where we can review our settings. I know everything is right, so just click on Create to create our load balancer. After you get the success message, just click on close. In this list of load balancers, just select the load balancer we just created. I only have one load balancer, so it's selected automatically. So just scroll down to basic configuration, which is here. And then we need to copy this A record. Or you can just click here to copy it. We need to go to our DNS configuration and create the record. Mine is in root 53, so I'm just going to open it here. When it opens up, just click on create record set. Make sure that the type is an A record. On the name, put in the domain name we used when we we're creating our SSL TLS certificate. So I'm just going to put in set manager demo as astuteprep.com is already provided. Select alias and select an alias target. It will give you a list of potential targets. So if you click here, you can see the potential targets. This is the only target that I have, which is an application load balancer. So I'm going to select this one and then click on create to create the record. As you can see, our A record was created. Just copy the name and give it time to propagate. I've waited for about five minutes. So now let me just go to my browser and then paste the domain name that I copied. Press enter. As you can see, we're now getting the website. But if you click on here, you can see that it's saying that our connection to this site is not secure. This is because I didn't use HTTPS. So let me just put HTTPS and see. So if I come here, then put HTTPS. As you can see, our connection is now secure. To make sure that we are always secure, we need to make a change. So go back to load balancers and select our load balancer. Scroll down and select listeners here. And then select the HTTP listener. Click on edit. We then need to delete the default action. And then click on add action and then redirect to HTTPS. And then we need to enter the port, which is 443. And then click on the check mark and then update. As you can see, we successfully modified the listener on port 80. And this means that whenever somebody puts HTTP, they'll be redirected to HTTPS. To verify, let me just go to my tab here and then paste in an HTTP link. As you can see, it's HTTP and then press enter. As you can see, it will always redirect to HTTPS. You can look here at the top here. With that, we are done. This is how you can create a free SSL TLS certificate with Amazon Certificate Manager and use it on an EC2 instance with a website behind a load balancer. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to support us. Now, to answer the question I previously asked, 
I left the protocol as HTTP because our load balancer is not communicating securely with our EC2 instance. The SSL TLS certificate that we put in is for the traffic hitting the load balancer. Then the load balancer uses HTTP to talk to our EC2 instance. If we would like our load balancer to use HTTPS to talk to our EC2 instance, we have to put another certificate on the EC2 instance itself and I do cover this in a future video. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.